In this module, we take a look at the process of creating trusses. Trusses are based on loadable families and can have the top and bottom vertical and diagonal webs set out automatically based on the line that you sketch. Different structural framing sections can then be applied to the top and bottom cords as well as the vertical and diagonal webs. In the image on the left, you can see a Warren six panel truss in the family editor. The panel's width is based on the line that you draw to define the length of the truss. The image on the right shows the same Warren truss attached to a roof. This defines the shape of the top cord. You can attach the top and bottom cord to floors and roofs. Go ahead and open up Project A. The project opens in the 3D view. In this module, we're going to take a look at the placement of trusses. Before we place our trusses around the curved portion of our structure here, we're first going to look at the interaction of a truss with things like floors and roofs. To begin, let's go ahead and open up the 00, zero ground floor plan. We'll use this as a test area to create our truss. I'd like to begin first by creating a grid. The reason why I'm going to create a grid is we'll need this when we create our roof by extrusion. So to create the grid on the structure ribbon, we can select a grid. And here, I'm just going to sketch in a grid. It doesn't particularly matter about the reference, but in this case here, I'm just going to label this X. In order for me to have a view to actually create my roof on, I'm going to go to the quick access toolbar and I'll select the section tool and I'll create a section through here. I don't need to see that deep, so I can go to the section here and change the extent. So we're just elevating this small area in here. And finally, I'm going to create my truss. To do this on the structure ribbon, you can see we have the truss command. Let's go ahead and select truss. On the context ribbon, you'll note here we only have the option of drawing a straight line or picking a line. On the options bar, you can see that we can set our placement plane and whether we want to chain or not. In the properties palette, you can see currently loaded in, we have a how flat truss. And you'll see here that we're creating the top cord and the bottom cord. The bearing cord is the bottom. I'm just going to change that to top. So essentially what that means is when I sketch my line for the truss, that will represent the top cord. And in this case, the truss will then go lower than the ground floor plan. So now I'm ready to actually create my truss. So I'm just going to sketch the truss just in front of this uh, grid line here. So we'll sketch it about here. OK, and there's my truss. I'll select the modify tool. And now I'm going to go ahead and look at this section I created. I'll just adjust the uh, crop region here. And you can see the truss. What we're going to do now is create a roof by extrusion. To do that, I can select the architecture ribbon. And on the architecture ribbon, I'll go to the roof pull down menu. And here I'll select roof by extrusion. The reason that we created that grid is now Revit is asking us for the work plane where this roof is going to start. Of course, here we can go ahead and select grid X and click OK. For the roof reference level, in this case, I'm just going to set this to the first floor and I'll click OK. Notice on the draw toolbar, we have the line tool currently active. In this case here, I'm going to use start end radius arc. So we'll now sketch a roof in. Now the roof has to be bigger than the truss. Okay. But just to make it a bit more interesting, we'll have a roof perhaps that takes on this sort of structure like this. As I say, the only thing to watch here is to make sure that the roof is actually bigger than the truss. And then I'll click the green tick to finish the edit mode on the roof. What we can now do is go ahead and select our truss. Now, if we take a look at the context ribbon, you'll notice here that we have a number of tools to help us when we're defining the truss. We can edit the profile. We can edit the family. We can reset this after we've done some editing tools. We can remove the truss family. Essentially, that will explode it down into structural framing. And here you can see I've got attach top bottom and detach top bottom. So notice here I can attach top bottom. I'm going to select this. And on the options bar, in this example, what I'd like to do is take the top boom of the truss and attach it to this curved roof. To do that, I just need to make sure that it says top. I can then select the reference, in this case the roof, and the truss will then adapt. OK, so the truss now is parametric. So if I select the roof and we now go to edit profile on the context ribbon, I can now start to make some adjustment. So here I might want to just increase the height of this. 
And now I can select the green tick and you'll see that the truss will then update to that new profile. If we go into our 3D view here, we can now see our truss. Don't forget that the roof is an architectural component, so we won't actually see that in the 3D view. It's worth noting, though, that you can actually attach trusses to structural floors as well. OK, so that was just to demonstrate that piece of functionality. We'll now delete these references. So I'm going to go back to section four. I'll delete the roof. And of course, that resets the truss. And then I'll delete the truss itself. I'll close down the section. I'll go back to my ground floor plane. And here I'll delete the grid. And also I'll delete the section. OK, so let's now look at the placement of our trusses along this front of the structure here. To do this, I'm going to switch now to the third floor plan. So that's 0, 3, 3rd. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our truss structures along this area of the structure here. What I'd like to do first is actually utilise a Warren five panel truss as a starting point. So to do this, we'll go back to our structure ribbon. We'll select the truss tool once again. Notice on the context ribbon, we have the option of loading a family. So let's click load family. That takes us into the UK library. Now what we want to do here is go directly to structural trusses. And in here, you can see that we have several different families that have different definitions of trusses. So if I select say the think truss, and then I press the down arrow on the keyboard, you can see that we can then go through and preview each type of these trusses in here. So the one I'm looking for at the minute is the Warren Truss 5 panel, which is this one here. We'll then select Open. In the Properties palette, you can now see that the active truss is the Warren Truss 5 panel. And here you can see that the bearing cord is currently top. And in this case, that's what I want. I want to actually be defining the top cord. You can see we can also configure the truss height. So in this case, for our particular roof structure here, we're going to set this to 1200. What we now need to do is define the sections that we're going to use within our truss. To do this, we select Edit Type. So in the Type Properties dialog, you can now see that we have top cords, vertical webs, diagonal webs, and bottom cords. So notice here we have Structural Framing Type, and we can then go ahead and select our framing type. This just uses the list of structural framing members that we've got loaded into our project. So in this example here, we're going to use a circular hollow section and I'm going to use this one here, CHS 101.6 by 4. Now, rather than having to find that and locate that for the remaining areas, I'm going to select this, use Control C on the keyboard. That would actually copy that to the clipboard. And then we can simply just paste that in, in here. So I want to use the same thing for the top cord, the vertical webs, the diagonal webs, and also our bottom cord. So you can see here, I've just used Control V to paste in those values in there. And that's now used the circular hollow section, the 101.6 by 4, for all of these areas in here. OK, so that's now our truss configured. We'll select OK, and we'll now start to model our truss. To do this, I'm going to start on this location here, and I'll then go to this first CHS post. Now, even though chain is on, we will probably have to um, pick this again for the first selection there, but then it should chain as we go around here. And we'll just go into the center of our CHS posts and back to this member over here. OK, let's now take a look at this in the 3D view. So we'll go to the 3D view and open this up. And now we can see our trusses defined. You can see on the Warren truss, the bottom boom doesn't actually go into the uh, main support here. So I want to actually change that. So I'm going to select the truss and up on the context ribbon here, we can edit the family. So in the family editor, you can now see that our Warren truss has loaded up. The first thing I'd like to do is switch on the reference planes and the annotations. So to do this, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut VV for visibility graphics. I'll select the Annotation Categories tab, and here I'll show Annotation Categories in this view. I'll then select OK. To help us read all of the various different annotations, I'm going to change the scale here to 1 to 100, and now I can see everything that's going on. What I'd like to do here first is delete some of these reference planes. What I'm looking for here is the reference plane at the end, the one in the center, and the one over here, and I just want one reference plane in the middle of each of these areas. So I can delete these two here and this one here, 
these two here and this one here. We'd also delete all of the webs here. So I'm just using the window selection to actually delete all of these. And now what we're left with is the top cord and the bottom cord. Now, the first thing I want to do is make sure that the bottom cord terminates on this reference plane here and this one over here. To do this, I'm going to make sure I use the align tool. So I'll select a line. I'll pick the reference plane first and then the bottom cord and then lock. I'll pick this reference plane here. And then notice here I can actually select the end point of the bottom cord and again constrain or lock that in. Same over here, pick the end point and then constrain or lock. Okay, so I'll just press modify to release the align command. And now what I must ensure is that we have equal dimensions on all of these reference planes. To do that, you can see at the minute that we have these dimensions split. So I'm going to delete this side of the dimensions. I'll select this group of dimensions here. And up on the context ribbon, I'll select edit witness line. I'll then pick the remaining reference planes. And then to set these down, I can just pick anywhere in the center of these, somewhere there. And notice here, I can make those equal. Okay, so the last thing we need to do now is create our diagonal and vertical webs. To do this, we can select the Create Ribbon. Note on the Create Ribbon, we have different buttons here to create top cords, bottom cords, and the webs. The webs will do the vertical and diagonals. So if I select the web tool, Notice here we won't need a vertical member here because the CHS post is going to give us that support. But what I do want is a diagonal in there. So I can draw my diagonal in. Then I can actually draw my vertical member in here. Then we'll put another diagonal in across here. Another vertical up here. And now we'll just repeat that over here. These lines would automatically constrain themselves to the reference planes. And now we can see all of those members in. If I just temporarily switch on the thick lines here, and we zoom into the truss here, you can clearly see the color differences here. So when we draw a vertical member, you'll see that comes out in this black color. If it's a diagonal web, like these ones here, they'll come out green. And you can see the top cord or the top boom, as I would call it, comes out in this magenta color. And the bottom boom is in this blue color over here. OK, so that's ready to go. So we can now load into project and close. I'm not going to save changes to this. I'll just say no here. And here we want to overwrite the existing version. OK, and you can now see all of our trusses have updated. So the last thing I want to do is change the material for these members and also then drop all of these trusses down 100 millimeters. So here I can select one of the trusses. I right mouse click and I'll select all instances visible in view. In the properties palette, you'll note here we have start level offset and end level offset. I'm going to set both of these values to negative 100. That will just drop all the trusses down 100 millimeters from the top of the columns there, or the actual 03 third floor level. And finally, I just want to actually set the materials for this here. We can select one of these members here. You may need to use the tab key just to select one of those CHS sections. We can then go ahead and select all instances visible in the view. In the properties palette, we can now go ahead, browse to our standard material that we've been using throughout this project. So I'll just type in the word steel in here and I can see this is the one we've been using, metal steel 43275. We'll select OK. And all the members have updated. OK, so that completes this uh, video and also completes this module on working with sloped structural members. OK, let's ensure that we've saved the project. And that completes the video.